Hey everyone, it's Marianne. Welcome to My Wasteless Life. I'm very excited to talk to you about the Hoya Carii, aka the Sweetheart Plant. Thank you so much for joining me today and if you're new, this is My Wasteless Life where I take you along my plant and sustainable lifestyle journey and share with you some of my tips and tricks along the way. And in today's video, I'm going to talk about the Hoya Carii plant since it's about to be Valentine's Day and it's such a popular plant. During this time, I thought it should be a good time to talk about the Hoya Carii. And aside from my pothos plants, the Hoya Carii is my most asked plant, especially after I did a video, three different ways to propagate the Hoya Carii. Everyone's been asking for updates. So today I'm gonna do a dedicated video solely on the Hoya Carii. I'm gonna talk to you about the different varieties, how to shop for one, and its care, and a little bit on updates on the propagations. The Hoya Carii is one of the very first additions to my plant collection. It is one of my favorite plants and I'm very excited to share with you everything about the Hoya Carii, aka the sweetheart plant. Hoya Carii is a species that is native to Southeast Asia and is named after Arthur Francis George Kerr, a British physician and botanist who is probably the very first known collector of the Hoya Carii plants back in 1910-1911 in Thailand. Hoya Carii is a climbing plant that can grow up to 4 meters high or 13 feet high. The stems have a diameter of 7 millimeter, which is a little bit thicker than most Hoyas, at least compared to the Hoya carnosus that I have. And the leaves are also quite thick, even compared to other Hoyas or wax plants. It can go up to 5 millimeters thick, and the leaves could go up to 6 centimeters wide. And like most Hoyas, the Hoya Carii produce flowers like the one that you see in this picture. When it comes to plant trends, the Hoya Carii is very popular around Valentine's Day, but as a houseplant trend in general, I remember it really, really being popular when I first started collecting plants back in 2019. And I wouldn't say the Hoya Carii is a rare plant, but it's still considered quite an uncommon plant, at least in my area here in the East Coast in Maryland. I haven't really seen anyone sell a full plant of the Hoya Carii. What is commonly sold is the single leaf Hoya Carii, which is very popular during Valentine's Day as a gift, kind of like the Lucky Bamboo, it's a little bit gimmicky. But the thing about those single leaf Hoya Carii plants is they do not grow into full plants like the one, this one that I have here. I propagated this one of the mother plant, but this one is a single leaf plant. So I have this for about over a year now since the day that I propagated it, and it still remains as a single leaf plant. As you can see, with proper care, a single leaf plant can last very long. I've heard for some people it could last up to two to three years. The single leaf Hoya Carii I have is probably a year and it's doing fine. It's actually even had some damage. If you can see underneath here, I dropped it and it broke off right there. But as you can see, it healed itself and it's perfectly fine. So I myself, when I first started, I didn't mind if I could just get my hands on single leaf Hoya Carii because they do look cute in their tiny pots and their heart-shaped leaf buried into the pot. But for other people, they might get duped into thinking that that single leaf Hoya Carii will become a plant or produce more leaves, but that is not the case. So in my experience, I haven't really seen or heard anyone say that their single leaf Hoya Carii produce new leaves. So if you do buy a single leaf Hoya Carii, do not have any expectations that it will grow into a new plant. But as I mentioned, I do like it as is because it's pretty cute as a single leaf Hoya Carii by itself. So the single leaf Hoya Carii, when I first started my plant journey in 2019, it could go from $25 even up to $30. Granted, it came with a cute decorative pot, but it was that pricey back then. But nowadays, you can find a single leaf Hoya Carii as cheap as $6. I saw someone post on Instagram, or maybe I think it was Facebook, that they found a single leaf Hoya Carii being sold at their local Walmart from Costa Farms. So you might want to check your local Walmarts if you're in a hunt for a single leaf Hoya Carii that's relatively affordable. And if you're gonna buy a single leaf Hoya Carii that's more than six or seven dollars, you're most likely just paying for the decorative pot that it came in. And even then, I wouldn't pay any more than 15, 20 dollars is pushing it. The pot has to be really cute for it to be 20 dollars, but I wouldn't pay any more than that for a single leaf Hoya Carii plant. But if you want a Hoya Carrier plant that would produce new leaves and be an actual plant, you can easily find a 4-inch Hoya Carrier plant being sold online. I was able to get my Hoya Carrier plant about two summers ago from 
houseplantshop.com but back then they were still selling the Hoya Kerii as a plant not just a single leaf Hoya Kerii and back then it only cost me $7.99 to get a Hoya Kerii plant and when I first got this Hoya Kerii it was just this two leaves underneath here and all of this are just new growth under my care but nowadays I don't think they sell the plant anymore they only sell a single leaf Hoya Kerii and I think even popular online plant shops like the Sill only sell the single leaf Hoya Kerii especially during this time but I'm pretty sure you can find the Hoya Kerii plant in other online plant shop. I know I've seen some being sold on Etsy and you could also probably check Facebook marketplace if you can find it in any of the more reputable online plant shops online. But as for prices, it's going to depend on the variety of the Hoya Kerii and how many leaves it already has or how mature the plant already is. Probably expect to pay a minimum of $15 for a two leaf Hoya Kerii and I wouldn't pay any more than $50 for a Hoya Kerii that's in a four inch pot and for a $50 Hoya Kerii plant that is in a four inch pot I would expect it to have a little bit more than just two leaves and I'll share more about the different price points of the Hoya Kerii when I go through the different varieties of the Hoya Kerii which is coming out next. So when it comes to the Hoya Kerii varieties, there's four well-known ones, but there's actually a little bit more than that. And I've learned that from Jillian of Jillian's Plant Corner. She has an amazing collection of Hoya Kerii. I think she has every single one but one, but she might have acquired that last variety already. For me, I have three varieties of the Hoya Kerii and they are more on the more popular or well-known varieties of the Hoya Kerii starting with the very regular one, just the Hoya Kerii Green and this is probably the easiest one or the most common one that you can find in the United States whether as a single leaf or as a full plant. So the next variety of the Hoya Kerii is the Hoya Kerii Splash which is basically the Hoya Kerii Green, but it has some splashes of silver or white on it. I don't have that one and I don't think I'm gonna get that one because if you look closely on my Hoya Kerii Green, you can see that it has some splashes of silver or white here and there, not very prominent, not as much as if I would get a Hoya Kerii splash, but I'm very satisfied with um, having just this amount of variegation in my Hoya Kerii Green. And I do like the look of the Hoya Kerii just as a green plant without any variegation. I can't say if the Hoya Kerii Splash is the next easiest to find Hoya Kerii. Like I said, you might get a Hoya Kerii Green that has some splashes in it, like I do, but for an actual Hoya Kerii Splash, I honestly haven't seen one in the market, but the thing is though, I'm not looking for it. Maybe that's why I'm not seeing it, but, but I do see more of the two other varieties of Hoya Kerii that I'm gonna mention next, more than the Hoya Kerii Splash, but I think that's also just goes to the demand the other two varieties the variegated forms of the hoya kerii are a little bit more in demand than just the hoya kerii splash in my experience if you get a hoya kerii green it is possible that some of the leaves of your hoya kerii would also have some splashes of silver or white in it so it makes it mood point to get a hoya kerii splash at least in my opinion and the next variety of the hoya kerii is the hoya kerii reverse variegated which is almost as similar as the Hoya green, but it has a lighter green variegation, sometimes even yellow variegation in the middle of the Hoya Kerii leaf. The variegation in my Hoya Kerii reverse variegata is not that prominent, but as you can see, there is a lighter variegation in the middle of the leaf or the inner side of the leaf as compared to the outer side of the leaf. That's why it's called the reverse variegata. And this plant is probably one of the last plants that I bought last year. I got this from a local nursery called A Street Farms, but they also imported this plant from Thailand. And actually when I bought it from them, they just received it and they were just unboxing it and trying to repot them but I was picking up another plant when I came by their nursery and they allowed me to have first dips on their Hoya reverse variegata and I picked up this one which I believe is the largest one out of the bunch so I left out there and this one cost me $25 bare root and they were going to sell it for $30 
already potted up and this one is not a single leaf cutting it came as a plant it has two leaves as you can see with a node and some root growth already starting so when i brought it home i kept it in sphagnum moss allowed it to grow some roots a little bit more i think after a month or so when i see the roots outgrowing the sphagnum moss that i put it in because i just put it in a tiny net pot I have transplanted it into this pot and into soil and so far it's doing well. It hasn't produced new leaves but I can see a point of new growth starting over here. I don't know if any local growers have been growing it within the United States. As far as I know, most people selling it have imported it either from Thailand or from Indonesia. But like I said, the one that I got, I did buy from a local nursery, but they did import it out of Thailand. So the prices on the reverse variegata might still be a little bit higher depending on where they source the plants. The prices might start to go down if the demand and the supply of it increases locally, but I'm not sure, but it might be for the next variety that I'm going to talk about which is the Hoya Carii Albo Marginata. So this is a more popular variegated version of the Hoya Carii because the variegation is a little bit more prominent. You can see it has the yellow leaves. Sometimes it can get to as close to white or cream color and it has the green variegation in the middle. And I got my Hoya Carii Albo Marginata when I did a plant import from Thailand and this one is a lot more finicky plant compared to the other Hoya Carii's because this one can experience rotting very easily and it's what happened to this one. I bought it as a full plant. It has six beautiful leaves and was doing so well in my care for about a month or so. But when I move it upstairs here in my bedroom, I think A, it didn't like the change in environment so quickly. A second, I probably did overwater it. So one by one, the leaves started to fall off. And this is all that I could save from my Hoya Carii Alba Marginata. And we can check together. The last time that I checked, it was growing roots. But if I could pull it out, as you can see, the moss is very, very dry. And it has some lichen in it just to weigh down the moss a little bit because it has been, the plant has been falling off. Uh, so, but to check the roots, let's see. And I'm not gonna pull out any more moss because some of it are quite attached to the roots and I don't wanna damage it. And as you can see, it is a two leaf Alba marginata right now and it is attached together but I'm not really sure if this would grow into a plant because when I was saving it from root rot it was pretty much rotted all the way up to the node so and these two are hanging on to each other by a thread so I'm not quite sure if this would still be a full plant but I guess we will see and I'll give more updates later on this year to see if this one actually becomes a plant. Those are the four most common Hoya Carii varieties. The Hoya Carii Green, Hoya Carii Splash, Hoya Carii Reverse Variegata, and Hoya Carii Alba Marginata. But there's four more Hoya Carii varieties that are considered a bit more rare or on the rare side. And I don't have this in my collection, but as mentioned earlier, Jillian from Jillian's Plant Corner has them. So if you want, go check out her video. I'll link it somewhere up here and down in the description. The other four varieties of the Hoya Carii is first the Hoya Carii Revolt, which is basically the same as the Hoya Carii Green, but the leaves are a little bit more wavy. And the next one is the Hoya Carii Pubescent, which is a more elongated leaf of the Hoya Carii. And according to Jillian, the leaves are a little bit more velvety, a little bit more fuzzy. And the other one is the Hoya Carii Spot Center, which is basically like the reverse variegata. It has a very light cream yellow variegation in the middle and green on the outside, and it has splashes of green all over the leaf. And the last variety is the Hoya Carii Albo Marginata Spot, which essentially is the Albo Marginata, but it has the same green splashes that you can find in a Hoya Carii Spot Center. And those are the eight varieties of the Hoya Carii. And when it comes to its plant care, the Hoya Carii is a succulent-like plant, so you pretty much take care of it like you would a succulent. You would want to give your Hoya Carii bright indirect light, I wouldn't give it too much of a direct light though because it could form spots on the leaves 
some Hoya collectors like to sun stress their Hoyas. I'm not sure how the sun stressing quite applies with the Hoya Carry Eye. In my experience, when I give the Hoya Carry Eye a little bit too much lights, it just produces leaf burn. So I would be careful about giving your Hoya Carry Eye direct light. I would just give it bright indirect light, but it does need a lot of light, especially if it's a plant and not just a single leaf and you don't want it to grow laggy. The first time my Hoya Carry Eye produced leaves, the distance between one leaf to the other is like really, really long and it looked really, really awkward because it's so laggy. But so if you've seen my Hoya Carry Eye propagation video, you would see how laggy it was. And that is also the reason why I decided to propagate off the plant to just let it start anew and have the leaves grow a little bit more compact. And now it has grown about three new leaves ever since then. I actually produced a lot more leaves than it currently has now, but I chopped off the initial growth after that propagation and I tried to propagate that but that was a fail because I left it outside and it got overly saturated when it rained so that was my bad. As you can see this is like a second or third new growth point from the original node of this plant but it's doing a lot better now the space in between the leaves are not so long. This one became a little bit leggy than the other two but that's okay because this one grew over the winters, it wasn't getting that much light. But as you can see from here, it is too close to the other leaves, so it's blocking the other leaves. So having it a little bit more space away from the other leaves, I think is actually a good thing so that the lower leaves can also receive some light, not just the ones on top. And when it comes to watering, I do let the soil completely dry. In fact, I don't just let it go completely dry, I let it stay dry for quite a bit. But I also don't let it go without water as long as maybe my Hoya Carnosa in larger pots or even some of the succulents that I still do have. Because I noticed the Hoya Carii in comparison to let's say my Hoya Carnosas, when they are really really dry you could see the leaves wrinkle but this one the leaves just start to brown. It will start to brown from the outside and it would just stay brown and wouldn't recover from that. So to prevent that browning, I do let it be completely dry. I let the soil to be completely dry and let it be dry for a little while because the leaves are very thick and hardy. They do have some water reservoir on their leaves, but when the leaves start to feel a little bit soft, that's when I water it. I don't let it go without watering for too long because like I said, it then produces leaf damage. And I do notice that a lot more with the Alba Marginata when I overwatered my plant and I tried to overcompensate and underwater the plant and the leaf starts to brown, it doesn't really recover from that at all. And eventually I lost those leaves because the rotting was just way too much. So maybe that's also a factor in it. So you can see with this one, I recently watered it. The soil is moist. And usually when I water my Hoya Carry Eyes, I do bottom water so that they don't get overly saturated, especially the ones in plastic pots. But this one is in a plastic pot. It is still the same plastic pot it came in and honestly it's also the same soil it came in because I have heard that Hoyas don't like to be repotted a lot so that's why this is still in the same soil it's in. But for Hoya Carriers, they are epiphytic plants meaning they are climbing plants so they don't really need a lot of soil or to be potted in soil they like a more well draining mix a chunky mix kind of like an orchid bark mix so that's why with this one as you can see with the reverse variegata i gave it that more chunkier mix you can see a lot of barks in here and perlite in the soil mix this one like i said i haven't repotted it ever since i've gotten it I might repot it this year, I don't know yet, but if I will repot it, I'll probably keep it in the same pot. Just give it a more chunkier, airier mix so that it's not in this soil mix anymore. It's It's been almost two years, so I probably do need to change its soil. It's probably lacking nutrients. But when it comes to fertilization, the Hoya Carii, you only need to fertilize it twice a year. I know some people don't even fertilize their Hoya Carry Eyes because I think in general they are very low feeders but if you also want it to flower then maybe fertilizing it is a good idea. I haven't experienced my Hoya Carry Eye flower but if it's anything like my Hoya Carnosas it needs to be a more mature plant before it does start to flower. And I have propagated quite a few times from this Hoya Carry Eye and it's not a large enough plant yet to be producing peduncles and producing 
flowers for me so that will be quite a while so that's why for my Hoya Carry Eye I don't plan to propagate from it anytime soon definitely not this year I'm just trying to make it grow and right now it doesn't need trellising I doubt it will need trellising anytime soon I don't think it will even need trellising this year even if it produces two or three more leaves um last year it produced about six leaves for me like i said the initial growth from that i cut off that's why it only has three new leaves so i expect it to grow up to six leaves for me this year and i don't think it would need trellising even at that point but eventually it would need trellising because like i said the hoya carry eye is a climbing plant so I think that's pretty much it on the Hoya Carry Eye. And if you're still wondering what happened to the propagations that I showed in the Hoya Carry Eye propagation video, all of those plants have been sold except for this one, the single leaf Hoya. I kept the single leaf Hoya because it is a single leaf. And the other three I sold in my Etsy, those have nodes with them when I propagated it. They produce roots within a month in every medium that I put them in. One was in soil that is in a propagation bag, the other was in perlite, the other was in sphagnum moss. All of them work beautifully. But if I'm going to choose which method I like the most, it's probably the sphagnum moss method. But that has been my preferred method for propagating my plants lately. So I think I'm just biased towards using sphagnum moss for propagation in general. But any of those methods work, I would just be very careful with the propagation bag when it comes to the humidity level because Hoyas do love humidity and it does speed up the root growth when there is humidity for the Hoya but it can also cause rotting and the moisture level of whatever medium you are using. You, you want your Hoya carry eye to always have access to some moisture but you don't want your sphagnum moss to be very very damp or very very saturated you don't want your perlite swimming in water you don't want your soil to be overly saturated as well oh so yeah so that's everything you need to know about the hoya carry eye the varieties shopping for one plant care and propagation updates if you have any more questions on the hoya carry eye please let me know down in the comments if anything is unclear or i still haven't any answered your question from the hoya carry eye propagation video please let me know down in the comments. I'll be very happy to answer them. But yeah, so thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you're new here, I hope you subscribe. I come up with houseplants and sustainable lifestyle videos every week. And if you haven't yet, go check out these videos up here until my next one. But until then, I see you. I appreciate you. Take care of yourself and each other and have a plentiful day. Bye.